standing no, in the no, face I'm, of I'm it, asking real quick for you're you're standing in the, the face of like from this that's not the only example that every at, every every uh, element of this conversation you know, this we've tried all, to ambush it, me with like some tweet no, or Destiny, some video that man, i've said to try I to make like me look you. bad i know we have like strong disagreements and i'm not I talking about whether i like so you or not have a vigorous conversation but for you to just sit here and call me immature and say i'm scared in this it's really weak man that's these are real positions that people have you can't just chalk it up to immature and, and being scared sure. and okay being you know what then, you know what i could be totally wrong let's see if you can prove me wrong what do you think that article about the dildo for your daughter was about oh, i didn't actually read it but okay it's then, then you've proven my point he's a formerly twitch partnered streamer uh you guys probably know him through his old relationship with hassan piker he's also alt-right adjacent uh give it up everybody for destiny how are you doing, sir? Doing great. That was uh, quite the introduction. Yeah. Thanks. And uh, of course, we're joined as always by my lovely co-host Annika, who is in the frozen hellscape known as Texas. How are you doing, Annika? I'm doing great. Uh, I also wanted to say, and this is mostly for your benefit, Destiny, we are streaming on a lot of platforms right now, including Facebook, and they're kind of touchy about language and stuff like that. If you could avoid saying the N word, I know you really like to say that when you're when you're getting loose and casual with your friends, but they will ban us if you do it. So try to keep the gamer words to a minimum. And um, yeah, that's it. I'll do my best to behave, okay? I feel Thanks, like this I was a mistake. That. You just uh, having a, a little snack a there. Mistake, right? <laughs> right now. Yeah, it's uh, dinner time for me. <laughs> okay, that's no problem. That's all good. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. So uh, I wanted to ask you a few things. You know, usually on the show, we have a kind of a free flow format at the start, and then we'll get into some stories. I do have some stories to look at later, but there's a few things I wanted to ask you about Destiny. Oh, oh, I have another, one other announcement I forgot about, but this is for you, Destiny. Uh, you and I had a debate a long time ago about like advocating for political violence. And I had said that you should be deplatformed for inciting violence. And after that debate, somebody sent me like the actual legal rulings on this in the US and what what they show is that in order for you to be like considered inciting violence, there has to be a reasonable expectation that somebody would actually do the thing that you're, and under that, you know, metric, I don't think that you were inciting violence. And I think that is good to err on the side of free speech for stuff like that. So I'm doing something I basically never do, which is like um, backpedaling or, or retracting something I've previously said. Well, almost a first on this channel, but I did want to say that I no longer hold that view. However, I hope you can appreciate that there's a, I'm coming from a place of frustration because of the double standard between left wing and right wing. And then you yourself, like I said, you got a uh, deep partner from Twitch because for basically saying the same thing, except this time you were talking about the Kenosha protesters instead of killing conservatives. So did you like that, that little taste of, of being a right winger on the internet? Um, I think I've been witch hunted from both sides more than probably any other person that I've talked to. So this isn't my first taste of being witch hunted from any particular side. Um, but I, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know what you want me to say. That take on, on both forms of violence is so reductionist. Um, I'm just going to say, uh, I appreciate your reconsidering of your opinion, even if it took showing you like a legal statute to get you to change your mind on it. But thank you. I guess. Yeah, no prob. No prob. Okay. So let's talk about your open relationship now there, there's a lot of rumors that swirl around you and i never know what's true and what's false what's what's myth and what's reality but so this is my understanding you can correct me if i'm wrong here but you are engaged to be married to a younger swedish girl and you guys also though have a sort of open relationship where you'll sleep with other people basically um yeah that that would be the definition of an open relationship yeah well i i don't is it because there there's like polyamory 
and like some i guess some people would date other people and have like romantic relationships do you guys do you is that your situation do you get in, romantically involved with other people or is it just raw animal sex um i would say that it is uh it leans more towards polyamory than open relationships but i mean every relationship is different so i don't know it just depends on the particular person you're talking to well I, i'm talking i'm not asking for you well you're, like you're... if somebody was if i was talking to a hardcore polyamorous couple i would probably describe what i do as being in an open relationship but if i was to talk to a couple in an open relationship i'd probably describe what i do as polyamory um when i say that everyone is unique like the where they set the boundaries is different so if you want to ask me details about my relationship, I can tell you. But in terms of like, is it polyamory, open relationship? I mean, like those are just labels that like broadly encompass some traits of some relationships. I guess I don't know how much more you want to dive into it or not. Well, do you have anything you want to add, Annika? Or I I was not aware that this was the subject matter. So um, I I tend to be destiny probably knows nothing about me. I tend to be I err on the side of I don't care what you do with your own body and your own home. Uh, like between two consenting adults. I Wait, mean, what about clearly, three consenting adults? I'm sorry, go ahead. Or, or, sorry, sorry, between consenting adults. I, I don't care what people do with the whole polyamory, pansexual, whatever. What I don't like is when we try to normalize that in society and when we, when um, the media tries to push things as if that's what we should be doing. Um, so for me, it's about, I don't care what you do in your bedroom, but could you not like broadcast it and try to, and don't get kids involved. That's actually my biggest thing. Out I mean, of all I think of this is like I'll broadcast yeah, it as just... much as any heterosexual monogamous relationship is broadcasted. I mean, there's like a ton of signaling and messaging on that. Um, I, I don't like heterosexual. I, I'm not into just the gratuitous sex everywhere either. And I, yeah, I don't sure. consider and I'm not into the trapped. Yeah, I understand. And I'm okay. not into like the ultra boring monogamous stuff. But I think that like everybody has relationships that work for them. Um, there's like the pros and cons of literally every type of relationship. Um, I think that there are some people that function like really well in monogamous relationships and they're super happy with it. And if they want to do that, yeah. I think that's awesome. Um, and if people like to do open relationships or whatever, I think I think that's cool too um i think it's a little bit weird when we say things like don't broadcast your non-monogamous relationship what? when like monogamous I mean, relationships are hardcore broadcasted constantly um but yeah okay. i mean everybody should be free to do what they want i think yeah but destiny monogamous re monogamous relationships are good for society and social cohesion for whereas all the like degenerate shit all the deviant stuff you're just spreading your kind of mind virus out to other people and the, and, and infecting them with it if we keep all of that stuff behind closed doors, we'll all be better off. There are so many things wrong with that statement. I'm not even really sure where to start, but. Um... I think it's more, okay, so maybe I kind of misspoke. Okay, so we, we had someone on here quite some time ago and I, I bothered a lot of the audience by uh, defending a guy who's into pretty hardcore BDSM stuff, like mm -hmm. pretty hardcore. And, um, again i and he's he's more of a libertarian he's an atheist it was david silverman in case mm -hmm. you're wondering um and for me it's about the now he was very private about it but it became public because there were false accusations made against him so his whole sex life got in, in enough, court publicly. records and is now public yeah mm -hmm. so um for me it's that it's not that i like you coming on here and saying you're poly i don't care about that it's when it's more when the media tries to push this and tries to normalize it in such a way because devious behavior I'm okay with. It's when, it, but it needs to stay deviant. Does that make I, sense? So kind of. Um, I have a feeling that w me and you two are probably diametrically opposed on social values, but I'm going to try to reach across here and see if we can find some level of okay. agreement. Um, I'm not. I'm not alt right, and I'm not. I wouldn't. I'm not saying anything about. I don't know. I don't even care about. We're, we haven't gotten okay. into Jewish people. I don't care about that. I'm just in terms of like yeah. values and, and the values that we ought to champion in society. Uh -huh. um, I get really uncomfortable when um, people try to make it sound like everybody should be in an open relationship or everybody should be, or shame people for being okay. in monogamous relationships. You and I, I can agree on yeah, that. Yeah, I totally agree on that. And I think that sometimes the messaging for those types of, if we call them alternative relationships, I think can get a little bit too pushy where people aren't respecting that. Well, maybe, you know, there's probably a reason why generally monogamous relationships have been, at least for the past hundred years, like pretty common, right? There's probably reasons for this. Um, so I, I, because I'm, the meaning of life is to continue on life and the procreation of the species. Well, and that's tough no. to do when children are transgendering themselves at age three. And well, that's, that's very difficult to do when children aren't being raised up in a healthy, in, with healthy 
parents, whether the parents are gay and same sex or regardless, it's more about just uh, fostering a community of people that can survive together. And prior to modern technology, we needed these things in place. Before DNA, men needed to know that that child was theirs. Um, I, so the, I, this like very evolutionary perspective of humanity, I think is a little bit dated. I don't think that we generally ascribe like meaning to our life by virtue of the function of our bodies. So like we can pre reproduce, therefore reproduction is the goal of our existence. Um, I think we've I would say we've like cognitively moved past that, right? Where we have other types of aspirations and goals. Um, I don't know if we should necessarily be like telling everybody you have to make kids and that should be the goal of life. For some people, I think that's great if that's what you want to do. And there are a lot of people that get happiness out of that, which I think is totally cool. That's fine if you want to do that. Um, I I'm a little bit uncomfortable taking the next step though, where you're like, listen, your goal, you need to be reproducing. That should be your ultimate goal in life. If that was the case, we should like, our society would need a radical reconstruction. Although I imagine both of you probably think that it does already. Well, why would it? Why would it why? what? Why would it need a radical uh, reconstruction in order for people to... Because reproduce? we engage in so many things that aren't directly related to reproduction, like our pursuit of the arts, our pursuit of higher education, playing video games. Uh, there's like a million things <clears throat> well, that we those, do. That so I... these things are not mutually exclusive, though. I mean, I do <laughs> basically all the things you just named, uh -huh. and I have children. Sure. Yeah. I'm just saying that like our also, primary... Or sorry, go ahead. No, well, at least in the West, we we are... You know, we have like medical technology, we have indoor plumbing, we have so many things that make our lives so easy. Um, mass production of food, vehicles, uh -huh. everything, um, to a point where we just survival is pretty easy for the most part. For people Too in the easy, Western world. that's the problem. Yeah, to the point where, ob <laughs> where one of our biggest issues with the homeless population is obesity and, and diabetes now. Um, and not just homeless, but po poverty. Poverty stricken people are, are just have so much food and so much abundance that it's actually causing problems now, health problems. So anyway, kind of the point I was getting at is I do believe scientifically that kind of the meaning of life is to continue on the species. Now you can bring in, you know, video games and all that because we want to enjoy our lives as well. Yeah, but I, I just would well, like the pro. So like, here's my problem. The problem is it feels to me like. And I run into this problem a lot with like, um, I don't know if TradCon is like an insult, but like traditional conservative value I, I, people. I wouldn't consider myself TradCon. No, I don't consider it an insult. I consider it a yeah, I don't consider sure. it. Okay, so I guess like my problem is that like, it sounds like on one end, um, I'm willing to extend respect to anybody that wants to be in a monogamous relationship. I think that's totally cool. Yeah. People want to do that. I think that's yeah. fine. And I, I, I appreciate that. Yeah. But I don't think I'm getting the same respect back when my lifestyle is described as deviant, asocial, socially destructive, anti-evolutionary. Like, it feels to me like there is, like, a lot of pushback there. And if we were going to go that case, if you wanted to make, a, like, a strict appeal to evolution, um, I'm just going to go back to when we were in the wilderness and we absolutely weren't monogamous. We lived as tribes then. Yeah. Um, we lived way closer to, like, um, I, I don't know if you'd say Hispanic families or Asian families, depending on where you go, that lived, like, in large groups of people, not just one man, one woman, and then two children. Like, that's a very abnormal formation of, like, the human unit right okay, right but we've been living this human, way for like the last 2000 yeah. years so it's kind Humans of do have a monogamous brain. Wait, wait we have not been doing that for 2000 we years. do have been... a monogamous brain that doesn't mean we've always been monogamous in practice but the human brain has been proven same as with the prairie bull i actually attended a symposium in 2006 on this whole thing i had to study it for six weeks human beings do have a monogamous brain um it's just that we that doesn't mean that we've never stepped out and when I, just real quickly i don't use the word deviant as a pejorative i use it meaning deviates from the norm that's kind of how i use the word yeah i, I understand like, that deviates. and i kind of expect okay. you to say that but nobody in your audience is hearing it that way and nobody else in the I, outside yeah, of like the academic I, world is using it that way because because i, cause I okay. have to be careful when somebody says like if you call somebody abnormal it's not necessarily an insult but it kind of yeah. is, right? That's how everybody hears it. So when you say, like, yeah. oh, you live a deviant lifestyle, that is a very morally loaded word. I mean, I look, I look down on it. Yeah, I know you do, but I'm like... saying, I, but I don't know. <laughs> I haven't figured out. I know I hate you already. I don't know if I hate uh, the Anika person. That's what I'm trying to figure out, right? Yeah. Uh, That's I'm just... funny you're dating a Swede and you just mispronounced a Swedish name. Uh, oh, wait, is it like, hold on, wait, wait, wait. Anika? No. Is it with the weird E? Is it like Anika or An Anika? I can't, I can't do the no. Swedish E. How do you pronounce it? Anika. Onika, okay, whatever. There's, there's, there's Onika, and okay. then there's just Annika. A lot of people say Annika, so. Gotcha. No, it's Anika. just funny that you called me Anika. Okay, gotcha. I didn't know you were Swedish, but. All right. Um, but anyway, yeah, I think that um, like, uh, fuck, I don't know where we want to go. Um, because 
philosophically, that to say that because our body has a particular function, we ought to maximize that function in society, that's like a huge jump in terms of like philosophy of, of life, that there's a lot of investigation that we could do there. And I, I would push back on a lot of that. Uh, I, but I don't see know how a wanna... bigger like society. I don't think all men and women should be parents. Actually, I think we should have far fewer parents. I think we should have fewer people procreating and they should have more children each. I think that society should work together similar to a commune, so but, not com but I'm not calm. No, I just, I don't think all parents should be forced or sorry. I don't think all adults should feel pressure to have children. I don't, I don't think that's for everyone. Um, I think that there's other roles in society that need to be filled. And again, like I said, commune, I'm not a communist, but I think that there's uh, there's different roles and not all of those involve having children. So. Sure. Yeah. I don't necessarily disagree with it. Um, I don't know how much of the program. Do you to plan to, do you plan to have children and how do you feel about children being raised in uh, polyamorous relationships? Uh, like so, them? I mean, I already have one child. Um, okay. But my, me and the mother broke up a, a long, long time ago. Um, I don't know how a child would be raised like in a poly, like three people living at a home raising a child. I'm not 100% sure how it would happen, but I know that there are like a variety of different family structures that exist. Um, the one that I'm most familiar with being uh, like, so I have a lot of Cuban family that lives in Hialeah and that the communities that lived there seem to work very much as a village. So like all the kids would usually spend time at like a cousin's house or something like that. And that would kind of be like how children were more or less raised. Like you would have like uncles and aunts and everybody that would be involved in that. Um, I, I don't know if, how you would raise a kid like with three or four people. I don't, I don't know what it would look like. I, I imagine as long as the kid feels like they're loved and supported and they have good role models and everything in life, probably be okay would be my guess. Uh, listen, Desi, I don't want to browbeat you about your relationship. I just have a couple things that I wanted to touch on this topic, and then we can move on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. So the first, uh, these actually both deal with this um, this healthy gamer guy, because you went on his show and your fiance, uh, I, I forget her name. I want to say Melania, but I don't think that's right. Uh, Melina or Melina. I can't pronounce her name. So the Swedish girl is <laughs> Melina. Me, okay. It's the, the E's are very weird in Swedish, but it's Melina is what I call her in English. So you and Melina both went on this guy's show separately. And when Melina was on the show, she broke down and started crying over her feelings of, I guess, jealousy or neglect. I don't, I'm not sure exactly. It's been a while since I watched it, but there was a lot of emotion there. How did, how did you feel when you watched that? I'm assuming you watched it. Um, I mean, I would have to go back and listen to the particular streams you're talking about, but like, I mean, we, like, I think that this conversation took place during, um, there's a lot of dramatic stuff that goes on in our life and we've been kind of like working back and forth on figuring out like the best path forward. Um, there are times when we're doing really well. It's so, like for the past like few months, we've been doing really well. There are times when we're very low. Um, so a few months ago we had like some insane, uh, drama with another group of people and that was like a low, um, it just depends on where we catch up. But I mean, yeah, we've got problems. We work through them like. But isn't having an open relationship inviting drama into your life? Um, the, just like as that? much as a closed relationship where a woman might get upset that her husband looks at another girl or where somebody talks to somebody wrong and somebody's incredibly, a lot of monogamous people are incredibly jealous and overpossessive of their spouses to like an unhealthy degree. Like I would argue Polyamorous. that I would argue that, uh, that there is a lot of monogamy that stems from an unhealthy obsession with having absolute control over your partner's sexual life, which I think can be abnormal. Not to say that it's always like that, but if you're going to attack like an open relationship, say like, oh, isn't that inviting trouble? Blah, it's like, well, sure, it could be, of course. But there's also a lot of upsides as well. But the same thing with a monogamous relationship. That can invite a lot of trouble too. It really just depends on your perspective. And it depends on what level of risk you're willing to take for what level of like gains you're willing to take. Yeah. Sorry, uh, I, I, earlier I didn't mean to cut you off, but I was going to say that um, uh, monogamous people do have those issues. I wouldn't say all. Um, just like not all, not all polyamorous people does it stem from just a desire to have sex with everything. I, I understand. I've had people explain to me that there's actual emotions involved in a lot of these relationships, especially when it's not just open. It's polyamory. To, to try to yeah. act like these things are like there's problems on both styles to me is, is insane. It's, it's self-evident. I mean, it's hard enough to manage one bitch. You try to adding more <laughs> I, bitches I didn't want to into say the it. stable. <laughs> 
there's no way that doesn't make your life more difficult. I mean, if you want to go self-evident, the divorce rate for monogamous couples in the U.S. is 50%, so I automatically win the argument. I mean, like, if you really There's want to go down that... I mean, like, well, well, it doesn't really work that way, right? How, how do you win? Are you trying to tell me that polyamorous relationships have a better success rate than <sighs> monogamous ones? Uh, maybe, but that's... the bar isn't very high for monogamous ones, so it's not like you're, okay, it's not like you're pointing... The number one cause of failed monogamous relationships, like marriage and such, is money. A lot of it is uh, just how they treat money and financial reasons. And I think, I don't know how high up, um, like, sleeping around and uh, no, it's, cheating. It's because we don't have values. So in I'm just society. looking this up real quick. So, and, wait, and so real quick, because this sounded, wait, real quick, because this sounded really wrong to me. So the most commonly okay. reported major contributors to divorce were lack of commitment, infidelity, and conflict slash arguing. The most common final straw reasons were infidelity, domestic violence, and substance use. The idea that people break up because of money, I, I don't think that's very common. I believe that for final straws for a lot of people, but if you actually look up like the number one, like the top 10 reasons for divorce, number one is like the woman saying that the man wasn't present. And she, it's not it's not men going out and cheating uh, and shit like that or, or beating their wives. It's like the the women feeling unsatisfied. So So lack of valuing commitment, lack of loyalty, that's the reason divorce rates are so low. And we should get rid of no-fault divorce. And that would help fix the problem. Okay. So you're saying that like there should be like a given reason for people to divorce? It's not just enough yeah, that they if, want it? If they cheat on you or beat you or like maybe tell some major lies and stuff like that, those would be good reasons to get divorced. But uh, I, I mean, to be honest, I, I'm not, I don't have a super strong like hard on for getting rid of no fault divorce. Okay. I, I think just, that it's, to yeah, refresh like where we, yeah, I understand. To refresh where we came problems. at from this. So like, Initially, it was presented as, I wish people wouldn't shove like polyamorous or open relationships on my face, which I agree, actually. I think that's really cringy sometimes. But on the flip side, I'm hearing a lot of prescriptive claims from you guys that everybody ought to be like, and I should say more for I hypocrite um, and not from you. Um, I, I don't think everybody's the same. And I think I'm prescribed like a motherfucker. Okay, yeah. So I'm, try, I'm trying not to mix you two up because I because you two okay. are taking very different uh, tones of the conversation. Well, he and I don't yeah. agree on everything. Sure, I understand. So he I'm and trying... I could, yeah, mm -hmm. he and I could debate as well. Okay, sure, gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. I'll, I'm, I'm trying very hard to keep you separate, so I don't, I don't let me mix you two. Yeah, like, uh, that's fine. Okay. Well, so I don't know if you were if you were done your thought there because it sounded like you were going somewhere. But I do have some, my last thing that I wanted to ask about, which is um, when you went on that guy's show, the the psychiatrist. You talked about how you view relationships as transactional, and. I don't know, I can't remember if this was brought up, but this is what I wanted to ask you was like, if you're, let's say you marry Melina mm -hmm. and then she gets sick, she gets cancer and you have to like, just look after her. And, and now the, uh, the give and take is like a lot more give on your side. Are you going to stay with her or are you going to bounce because now the transaction is no longer like profitable for you? Yeah. So I stopped using the term transactional just because people like you seem to have a really hard under time, like understanding it, like, or you have a very one dimensional view of like what transactional means. Like you're literally using and abusing somebody so you can't get anything else. When I say something is transactional, what I just mean is that like everything has a little bit of give and take. If somebody's hanging out with me, it's because I make them happy. And then if I'm hanging out with them, it's because they make me happy. That when I say transaction, I just mean that usually both sides are profiting in some way, immaterial or materially from being with each other. That's all I mean. When when I say that in terms of like if, if my fiance if if, uh, if Melina got sick or something and I and needed somebody to care it yeah I think of course I would I'd expect her to do the same thing for me like I could view that as a type of transaction we both have expectations for how the other would act in a relationship now this goes to of course like a reasonable level right like if one person became mentally ill and became like super abusive I don't know if I would view the same necessity for commitment or if one person became so ill that they needed round the clock 24 7 treatment um, I love Melina I wouldn't expect her to sacrifice the rest of her life for me maybe in some capacity small capacity and then I wouldn't probably accept, um, I, I wouldn't want to sacrifice the rest of my life. Right? Yeah. Okay, well, I mean, that's good to hear. That's a little more uh, reassuring I, that you're not a total monster. I sort of understood the transactional when I first heard it. Um, I'm glad that you clarified that because I tend to use words as well, like I said earlier with the word deviant, where I, I need to remember that people have a different definition. Mm -hmm. so, I don't think that I, I, I have a what you bad that. view of that word. I, I was thinking of it as a give and take, but my yeah. assumption about destiny was more that if he has to take care of somebody and put in a lot of effort, he's not going to view himself as getting something out of that. But he clarified yeah. that. So it's all well, good. Well, and relationships are often lopsided. And that's where like the empathy centers in the brain come in. And that's where like having a 
close bond with somebody that at, at, at certain points you just take care of them because you love them. Yeah, that's when you make you're getting you marry them. somebody, that's part yeah. of the the deal that you're signing yeah. on for, basically. All right, so we're all on the same page there, yeah. at least. One, I just remembered one last thing, which was this little clip of yours. I don't know how old this is, but let's let's give this a little watch, and then we can move on to the next topic here. Uh, this is short. Play this. It feels it feels like a lot of people that have sex don't even fucking like it i did so fucking weird like they don't have a preference for positions they don't masturbate they don't care if they come or not they don't even know how to get themselves off if you end up like finishing or finishing early they won't finish themselves they'll just walk off and do whatever they like it is like an unbelievable world where like you meet these people it's this uh it's that really hard concept of like simulacra i guess where, where you're in this you don't even know like what 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 is reality anymore like you meet these people that are like these you, dude you're so hot on instagram you post like all these tantalizing images you have these crazy captions and then in real life like we fucked missionary for five minutes and you're bored and we're done and it's like that's it it's like what the fuck i don't know dude all of the the whole world is crazy okay there you go that's it the whole world is fucking crazy if you <laughs> so little bit of a cell phone there maybe wait how is it a little bit of a cell phone i think because you're the implication is that the women that you're or people i don't i don't know your oh preference. i it's Sorry. really I, really I really no no I, understand. no I understand no i understand it's I, really I really understand really it. cringy to me when like other men try to like do this game because like anybody that knows my reputation knows how absolutely fucking stupid you look doing it um, i'm not going to sit here and brag about like my sexual exploits because i think that's no. equally as cringy as somebody okay. trying to attack me for them but so yes, i'm just going to say if you want to take me. the oh no no i'm not i'm not i'm not phrasing that to you well, um, hold on Annika, are you trying but, like, were uh, you being hyperbolic sure we're all clear on no so i don't i don't know like i don't know what the conversation was cut from so this conversation has to do with the idea that I've met a lot of people on Instagram or on YouTube yes. that sell like highly sexualized images, but when you meet them in real life, they're not sexual at all. And that that's is like normal. very- That's normal. That's yeah, exactly, the yeah. same way, but that, but because But that, I wouldn't say that's people. I would say that's Instagram girls. Well, well it, yeah, it might be regardless. A, I have it, my yeah. own theory on this if you want okay. to hear it. Okay. What, what if, um, Destiny, you're internet famous, right? Celebrity of sorts, an e-celeb at the very least very wealthy man, a lot of uh, influence, a lot of clout. Maybe these tens, these models, these Victoria's Secret models on Instagram that you're sleeping with, maybe it's not because they have like a raw animal attraction to you. You know what I'm saying? Maybe they're trying to get something else out of the transaction. Okay. I'm just going to respond to Anika because this is really a cringe line of argumentation. Um, so the, the reality is, and for anybody that works behind the scenes, they know this, right? Is that it seems like there's a huge industry that revolves around people that sell sex. And the impression that I would get is that like, wow, like you're heavily involved in like the sale and the advertising and everything with sex. But when you get to know these people behind the scenes, when you have conversations with them, we you know the types of lies they leave, you find out that like, wow, like this person like is not fucking anybody or this person like doesn't even masturbate or they don't actually, they don't actually have like that big of an investment in sex compared to what you would imagine. So like of all the people that I know behind the scenes like the people that are having the most sex are not the people that you would expect and when you look into I the lives agree. yeah when you look into like the dating and sexual lives, they're very hot people what you just said yeah they're actually studies have very... actually proven that conservatives have way more sex than these than these trisexual like these these uh leftist women who are just uh, getting naked and painting their bodies and standing in the street and telling guys not to look at them or else they're a rapist like all those crazy women who use sex to shock people aren't the ones having sex conservatives are. Yeah, I don't know if I'd go that far, but I, I think in the, in there, the middle, I think studies, we, yeah. I mean, there's social studies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like in, in the, I'll, I'll meet you in the middle there. I think that there are a lot of people that sell sex and they give a very different impression of what they actually are like behind closed doors. Um, if you think that's just because I'm a huge loser and nobody wants to talk about that, I mean, I guess I hypocrite, you're welcome to think that, but anybody that knows me knows that's not the case. So. No, that's, so I want to clarify something because you acted as if I was like accusing you of, of pretending to get laid or something like I, I'm sure that these women are attractive and sleeping with you. I totally believe that. I'm not even talking We're, about them sleeping with me. I'm just like, you, you realize you can talk with somebody about their sex life and sexuality without having to fuck them, right? Like 
These are some of these people aren't people that are fucked at all. It's just conversations or things that are well known behind the scenes. Well, I, like, it's it, weird to me to have detailed conversations with people about their sex life. I mean, so when I, you're I a, yeah, it, when you're a tradcon, that's not that surprising. So put yourself in somebody yeah. else's shoes, right? If I have conversations about sex with a lot of different people, so when you are saying that you have missionary sex for five minutes and then they walk away bored, you were talking about people's like third hand experience that you heard about. No, so there can be a combination of personal experience and third hand experience, right? Like that, con you're clipping like a twenty second thing out of like a pretty long conversation about the way that people present sex on the internet and then my personal experiences and then things that I've heard about these people, right? Sure. Anyway, I can't, I can't I, tell I, if you're I, trying to engage with the conversation. I'm, I'm just looking for a really dumb trope. Oh. Yeah, no, I know. Look, yeah. So it's, yeah, okay. yeah, but I, I, I have a good just trying to, he's trying to run with the implication that like either I suck at sex or girls are just fucking me for my money and they hate me. Or they're disgusted. I like, if that's the trope, you don't run. Again, like it's really cringy for me because this is like a very archetypical man thing is to try to use like sex as signaling your value or whatever, like red pill shit. I don't need to do that because if we were to play that game, like I, I think I'm already doing really well. So I'm not going to sit here and like have that dick waving contest with you. If that's, if that's your takeaway from it, then that's fine. Um, I mean, like plenty of people have that takeaway um, when they see like somebody like me that's like 5'8 and not shredded and they think I'm a huge fucking cocker loser um, they invent all sorts of things in their mind to like uh, cope with the fact that they themselves might not be as successful either sexually or financially as they'd like to be and if that's your goal if that's what you want to do I don't care you can use me as whatever punching bag you want at the end of the day I'm never I thinking about you and at the end of the day clip, you're like trying you know, to find clips of me to, to like find things to, to make me look bad you know? about why, uh -huh. you're, why you're saying that in the clip look if it's not a cell phone that's fine uh, what, what about this alternate theory, though, too? Because you uh -huh. guys both, both hung up on this idea that these uh, highly sexualized women are just these dead starfish or whatever. What if it's because women need more time to get comfortable with a man? You can't go bang a chick the first time and expect to have this mind-blowing sex. What you get the good sex from is you know, practicing with the same woman, getting her comfortable with you and bonded to you. Yeah, so, like, there are... Yeah, there are elements of truth to that. You just have to be careful with how you go about it. Yeah. So, like, I, I've had a decent amount of, like, one-night stands. The best sex that I've ever had are with long-term partners, like, every time. Um, I think it's really cool to have sexual experiences with new people because you can, like, open yourself up to things that you hadn't thought about or hadn't tried before. And because everybody's body and the way they do things is a little bit differently. So that's fun. But getting to know somebody's body and getting to learn that is, like, an experience in and of itself that can't really be replicated with, like, a one-night stand or just a casual one-off. So I kind of agree with you there, but not because women's brains are wired to only give the good sex to the bonded pair or whatever but just because like learning somebody's body it's like having you know like playing games with somebody having a conversation with somebody like the more that you do something the more likely you are to learn and understand how each other works Alrighty. <laughs> wait so i can say it yeah um i mean i don't i do think that men and women naturally in our natural state are more likely to want to bond um and again that goes to the you know the child rearing I'm I'm not like a hundred percent on that where I don't think that people can enjoy a one night stand because I've heard plenty of uh, you know third hand stories about that as well. Uh -huh. um, I I have zero interest in it. A lot of a lot of my views because I'm I'm not religious. I I sort of libertarian in a lot of ways, um, non aggression principle, and um, I'm I'm big on like bodily autonomy and Second Amendment goes along with that for me, but. Um, for me, there's there's zero interest in that. Like the, I, I think that like getting, the idea of dating someone new and mm -hmm. that beginning, actually it, there's no interest in it. I don't get that high that a lot of people get at the, that, like what you said, uh, someone new getting to know them, like trying new things. That's the part that I'm like, no, I want like, I want a bicycle that I've been riding for two years. Like, I, I don't want new. I think that's 150% so. totally fair. Yeah, there are people that are like that. I know really yeah. cool people that and, are like that. And, like, but I do that, understand I that there are people that they get bored uh -huh. and stuff like that. Yeah, so. it just depends. Like, I mean, when it comes to video games, there are people that like to play lots of different games. I was a semi-professional StarCraft II player. Like, I sat in front of my computer to play the same game for, like, 14 hours a day for, like, three years. Like, I, some, everybody's a little bit different when it comes to, like, what they enjoy. Like, that's totally fine, I think. All right. Speaking of things that you can get out of a relationship, particularly meeting new people, having one night stands. I wanted to touch on the STD thing with you because we had uh, Twitter. We talked about this on Twitter, but we never actually got a chance to get into the meat of it. Uh -huh. uh, Melina, your fiance tweeted out this tweet. Do people actually think chlamydia is deadly or is this about incels being scared of sex? and also jealous of people for having it. Now, I don't know Melina, I don't know if she's kind of like trollish and baiting people here, but she did get ratioed 
pretty hard on this tweet if you look at the the retweets to quote tweets there but i mean if we're going by ratio it shows you know somebody who's correct you must be like a huge sjw because conservatives get ratioed on twitter all the fucking time so i'm not sure <laughs> What the well, point I'm just trying to say No, wait, wait, wait real quick, real quick. I, just, I would just like to point out, I don't know if your audience cares or not, but for mine, right, every time you do this a lot, right, it's a very cowardly thing is when you say, I'm just saying, is a way to like kind of shirk away from the responsibility of your implication. I'm not an idiot, right? And I think most people know what you're implying. Um, so please stop doing that. Don't, don't, don't use the phrase, I'm just saying in this conversation, right, because you're too scared to kind of like own what you're saying. It's okay to own it. I'm not going to like scream at you, but don't, don't play that game with me. It's, it's okay, insulting okay, to both I'll of us, okay? Just, okay? <laughs> yeah, okay? I am saying. Thank you. That okay. A lot of people probably disagreed or had opinions about this. Uh -huh. And I think you did a stream when this went on where you were basically saying that getting STDs is not a big deal. I mean, like, yeah, it depends on how you phrase it. So like, and it depends on the context of the conversation. So like a lot of things can be a big deal. A lot of things could not be a big deal, depending on what we're talking about. So my issue is that when we talk about STDs, the ideas and attitudes that people have around them can be pretty insane sometimes. Like there are a lot of people, especially listening to this show, I guarantee there are a lot of people in this audience that think like gonorrhea or chlamydia, if you get those, that you have them for life. Like there's a lot of really weird shit that goes around about STDs. And then typically, if you bring up the idea behind like open relationships or something, people will oftentimes say like, oh, that's disgusting. You're gonna get STDs everywhere. It's like, you can get STDs from fucking a single person. You're gonna get STDs from never fucking anybody, actually. Right? Well, you're isn't, isn't very chlamydia the one that to get STDs in a illness? Though? You're thinking so. So that's a really good what you just said. Chlamydia does not cause mental illness. That's syphilis. Uh, one, one of them syphilis. causes like brain inflammation. Okay, syphilis. Yeah. Sorry about that. So I, this is this is what I mean when I I've say like people. Fortunately, have like, never had an STD. So. Sure. Yeah. So um, uh, yeah. So what well, have you ever? Uh, never mind. Um, yeah. I'm just saying that like. Have I ever? I was gonna say, have you ever what? been tested for HSV one or two? A lot. Yeah, of I, I. Yes. Um. Yes. There. There are times I have. I have health issues. And totally I've been clean, tested baby. For everything. Okay, yeah. cool. Have you ever had like a cold sore before? Have I had a what? Cold sore before? Ha yes, but I was born with that. That's actually, that's the herpes simplex, the one that... Yeah, like, so that's a, a really good percentage. example of, of part of the signature. So you have herpes, yeah. right? Yes, but it's not sexually transmitted. No, it, it is. Four, this is exactly so. This is exactly what okay. I'm talking about. You, it if can you, if be, you, okay. No, 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 no. HSV. I've, so you have HSV one. That can be transmitted just as easily as yes. HSV two to the genitals. Yes, I understand 100%. that. Yeah. It's also from mother to daughter or mm -hmm. mother to child. It's very. It's so common. It's like saying the flu is an STD. If you're having sex and you catch the flu, is it an STD? I mean, that's, well, no, I understand the reason why, it, so the reason why HSV, why herpes simplex it's virus. It's easily transmissible and it's in the saliva. I mean, mm -hmm. you can make out with somebody and get enough of the virus in your mouth. Yeah, exactly. Um, but like this kind of conversation, and I'm not judging you for that, right? like, that's fine. Um, I'm just well, saying. I was, I've had it since I was, I think I was born with it. I mean, it's not a big deal. I, get I like agree. Look, you one... just said it. I agree with you. You just said it. It's not okay. a big deal. That's exactly all I was trying to say. And that's more or less what but Melina's were, trying to say too. Yeah. But that's your response to me saying I've never had an STD. Well, because what you're saying is not true. You do have an STD. You have herpes. Okay, now you're spreading. And I'll say it is kind of I mean, a big I, okay, deal. Okay, sorry, I've never right? had a disease I, transmit, so deal transmitted sexually. Well, that's the <laughs> that's thing, though. That's, that's the thing is that there are some STDs that can that people call STDs that aren't necessarily transmitted sexually. I think that's why I think removing the stigma on a lot of this stuff is a really good idea. So, for instance, um, yeah. part of us dealing with HIV in the United States, it took so long for us to get around to that. It wasn't until a little boy got a blood transfusion and he got an infection of HIV that we finally, as a country, came around to take it seriously. Because until then, people just it actually it. was the science behind it one of my investors is the one who made the first treatment she sold her company for 900 million dollars in the night in the 90s 900 million dollars in the 90s and i've talked she's talked my ear out about hiv and it's not that we just decided to wait until a little boy got it there scientists around the world were working on it no so I, it I, I think it, i think time. it literally was that little boy getting infected because it was reagan I I mean, you can say that, but I'm pretty sure literally the name of that executive order that Reagan issued was literally named after that boy that got infected. Like that That's was a... fine, but it took a long time. Are you going to say that we didn't get a COVID vaccine until Biden got into power? I've heard people with that little kind of thing, like they just wanted to make Trump look bad. I don't no, believe I'm that. I'm just saying that, like, I'm just saying that I agree that there's a lot of scientific research that goes into things, but a lot of that can move back and forth based on the political will that exists. And it's people. money. It's who can make the most money off of sure, it. We can say it's very hard to raise. Yeah, yeah, we can say 22, I, but I'm I saying I will like, agree. Okay. Mm -hmm. I will concede that the funding was probably much easier once we got an innocent poster yeah, child. Yeah, exactly. That's what yes. I'm saying. Yeah. But, that's, but we didn't wait. We didn't say, oh, who gives a shit about HIV? 
Sure. I, I mean, well, that, I think we kind it, of, but I think like culturally, I think culturally, we kind of did case. because we we kind of the assumption in that time in the United okay. States, the, in that time in the culturally, United States, culturally, not scientifically. Yeah, sure. But then the culture can kind of drive the science sometimes, depending on what's going on. Uh, science, right? uh, yeah, maybe more recently, scientists are affected by politics. What is this culture. crazy fucking conversation we're having? AIDS is like the most stigmatized thing. Nobody wanted to get AIDS. Nobody was like casual about AIDS. Like, oh, it's no big deal. I, I, all I'm saying is that it took like a, a case to like destigmatize it. That it's not just a, a disease that evil people. I don't think that, that was the people... case. I think I think it was people having friends and family it and loved ones that had HIV in the 80s. To this day. I, it wasn't I, just stigmatized. <laughs> a lot of people were affected. Like a crazy. lot of people found out that their brother or their son were gay because they found out he had HIV and he came out of the closet. And it was a horrible way to die. I mean, this wasn't. This wasn't one little boy. In fact, I can't even remember the little boy you're referring to because I've heard so many so, stories. Uh, sure. I, so the name of the kid is Ryan White. This is what this is okay. what Reagan said about AIDS before Ryan White. He basically said, and I quote, "Don't medicine and morality teach the same lesson?" Um, like this, the way that we viewed HIV was far different once we found that's out that Reagan. innocent people. Yeah, that's not how scientists. That's not how people around the world that were spending, God knows how much money on. Um, fundraisers to help with research. I mean, there were a lot of people that were freaked out about it. Yeah. And I understand they were they were scared of it because we didn't understand that it was transmitted in the beginning. Yeah. But I, at some point, it, it was almost, it wasn't as widespread as COVID, but it was the same kind of story where everybody knew somebody who knew somebody who had it. Sure. At or some everybody point, everybody had a story about yeah, somebody. And at did. some point, we had to, yeah. I'm just saying that, like, when the culture is a particular way, it's easier to find the funding and the political will and everything to like to move that type of stuff along and to bring it to like the forefront of the like country's consciousness, basically. Like, um, e like even in the scientific community, I'm pretty sure it was called uh, gay-related immune deficiency before it was finally because they actually thought that that's how we caught it, just sure. like we called it the Wuhan flu. Sure, I, I knew about the Wuhan flu back last December. Before, like six weeks before I heard anybody else talking about it because I was meeting with the FDA. Sure. And we were doing animal testing trials. And I work for an investment bank, but all my companies that I work with are biotech. And we were doing our animal testing in Wuhan. And they told us that we were going to have to bring our animal testing back to America so the FDA wouldn't pass us until we brought everything back. And it was weeks before anybody was talking about it and yeah we refer to it as the wuhan flu we thought it came from bats we thought it came from a lab we didn't know where it came from sure we, I, I understand we I'll, said and did a lot of stupid shit back then because we were ill formed Ill yeah informed. i understand so just in terms of backing up all i'm saying is that people have really 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 bad ideas in their head about like what stds are how you get treated for them and more importantly how to responsibly test for them to ensure that you don't transmit from one person to another um and when people talk about it the conversations oftentimes become like very toxic very quickly so I'm saying, and I think we Lena need was more stigma. On, we what, have an what do you epidemic. mean by toxic? Wait, wait, wait. We wait, have wait, an wait, epidemic wait. of STDs. They're all on the rise. Insane levels of STDs out there. Just STDs everywhere because of hookup culture, because of pornography and casual sex. And porn? I, wait, 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 wait. LV, it's porn, not, you you're not an incel if you don't want to catch a fucking disease from some, you know, you. It's not an scam. incel if you, for, okay, hold on, Chuck. It's not that you're an incel if you don't want to catch a disease. It's that you're an incel if you don't know how these diseases work or if you're claiming that other people are like permanently damaged because they've that had like a, a bacterial. as well. Okay, you can call it is a non sequitur. Is she using incel as a pejorative? Because incels aren't men who are afraid of sex. Sure. Incels are men who desperately the, desire to have a relationship, usually sure. relationships. On, and for online and communities. In sure, that. in online communities. They can't play StarCraft. They don't get the pussy. In online communities, incel is like a type of community that usually have like certain types of beliefs. So like, for instance, like I hypocrite and a lot of the stuff he's been saying would be pretty incel-y. Like people would say like, oh, this guy sounds like an incel. If having sex with a woman that's had multiple partners is having sex with a used up skank. That sounds like something an incel would say. It's like that, that's what the referring thing was to. Not just like attacking people that are involuntarily celibate. Um, that's just like a, a phrase, like incel like implies a lot more and everybody on the internet uses this way. Um, it doesn't just mean like a, a person that's a virgin that hasn't had sex before. For. Destiny, you're just trying to call me an incel so that you can assert your dominant male sexual prowess over me, but I'll have you know I'm married, sir, so not an incel. So he never gotcha. gets laid, is what he's trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> hey -o. Uh 
I, I agree with Destiny that incel is like a phenotype. It's not just the state of being. I've had this argument with Annika a few times in the past, but I don't think that you actually know the phenotype if you're saying that it means you don't want to have sex with like a slut. You know what I mean? Because that's not what it is to be an incel. Incels would definitely fuck sluts if they got so. The so that means like it it's part of like what that community says it's not the necessary and sufficient right it's not like if you say this one thing you're automatically insult just it tends to be something that they tend to say i'm not sure about that okay. i've i've, been I, I've actually in had insult we had an insult on the show here and yeah. a couple of times didn't get that impression probably had more here. than we know okay well maybe we have different experiences with incel communities then i guess but slut shaming and all of that I, seems to go pretty part and parcel with being like an insult and in the insult community generally well, slut shaming is just based, though. You don't have to be an incel to want to steer society back towards a monogamous culture that values and respects sex and treats it as something, you know, special and sacred and intimate. You don't have to be an incel to believe in that. Okay, it's. I really want to throw a bunch back at you, but now, I, unfortunately, I catch like um, Anika in the crosshair, so I don't. It's pretty uh, disarming. <laughs> um, I don't know what to say. Um, Listen, some people prefer having sex with people with more experience. Um, I, that's all I'll say. Like, it, like, you can responsibly deal with STDs as long as you're aware of them, you know how to treat them, um, and you know what to look for, and you know about them. Um, there's a ton of misconceptions about STDs, so I think it behooves everybody to do a little bit more reading and research on them so we have a better understanding of it. Well, just wear a condom, and then you're very unlikely to get yeah, the serious stuff, right? At least, at least the men, I think. So yeah, so like right. this is- yeah, so Do you again, wear a like, condom when on. you're fucking other women who aren't your fiance? Not generally, because I make sure we're all tested first. Oh um, dear. But like, so again, like with what you just said, like this is what I'm saying. We could what do, if you get some chick so pregnant, we could do bro. like we could do a whole, how, how, We could do a whole show on this if you want, right? The idea that a condom protects you from the most serious STDs isn't even necessarily true. So HSV can be transmitted even if you wear a condom. So you don't actually know that. This is exactly the type of stuff no, I'm talking about when be, I say- can be, can be, but it's Way what if you get her food. pregnant though? That's you can get you can get pregnant yeah. wearing a condom. We all know this, but wearing a condom is going to like severely you reduce your risks. Are you familiar with the term destiny? Uh, you know, I haven't been sperm jacked yet, but you know, I, okay, every time I you you know, yeah, it's not possible like for me to be sperm jacked. I can't be sperm jacked. Um, do you have a vasectomy? Um, did you get your snip? No, what I do is I actually I carry around like a hard cord, some Trump branded disinfectant, and anytime I coom on somebody, I take the disinfectant, I just start spraying them down. You ever seen, I've actually have you ever seen Boondock Saints? Guys. Do you remember when they get shot and they take the disinfectant and they spray the blood so they can't find it? I carry one of those around with me. So anytime I, I finish on a girl, I take the mean. spray out immediately. You gotta protect yourself, <laughs> no, dude. I got LP, that streamer actually, money. Come on. I saw I don't remember where probably on YouTube, some guy was talking about how uh because he was successful he would not throw condoms away he would like put them in a baggie and leave with them because there had been a story where a woman had sure sure i've firm jacked a guy that. with them I mean, with a these are all condom. problems that married monogamous people don't have <laughs> that's true but that's destiny true. seriously hmm. are, real, how, how do you how do you make sure one. that you don't get one of these other real quick that's not here. true the, uh, there are married people that have problems with their spouses tricking them into having more children or where they previously agreed not to have children and then one person like falls back on that agreement and starts doing tricky stuff that absolutely suppose, can happen yeah i suppose that's true but you probably don't have to worry about hiding your condoms from your wife in most cases i, I don't i don't interact with people that i have to hide condoms from but uh, i mean i don't know but, it, but okay the the so you think okay having your spouse get pregnant again is far less of a mess like drama so to speak like you were saying earlier then having Are you really just woman. using the pull out method with all these these casual encounters? That well, it depends. Having? Maybe we don't have uh, penis and vagina. Maybe we don't do PIV if the person isn't on birth control. Like, I, there's a whole bunch of different. If you if you want me to birth give you like an anatomy, can fail. so everything can fail. Condoms can fail. I mean, what if a girl fell in love with you and tried to destroy your relationship? I've seen. I lived in California for a decade. I. I saw all kinds of crazy things like that. I mean, that. what if my fiance went crazy in the night and tried to stab me and kill me? I mean, I, like anything can happen. Like all you can do in life is minimize your risks, decide if you want to accept the risks. But you're maybe. maximizing your risks. You're like, you're like exponentially <laughs> maximizing your risks by bringing in extra partners. That's kind of what we were saying is like the risk versus the reward, but it's sure. clearly- Like you're you maximizing your risk of death every time you get in an airplane or get in a car. I mean, I, I, I don't know, like I have a level of risk that I'm willing to accept. I think that I'm pretty responsible with the people that I have sex with. I'm not running around creating millions of kids or anything. Like this is not like part of what I do in my life. I like, I think that I'm doing okay, okay. so far. 
All right, fair enough. Listen, uh, I have one last topic on the Destiny issue, and then I have a couple studies we can look at if you guys want. I know we're kind of coming up on an hour, so it depends if Destiny wants to stay longer or not. But uh, I, again, I don't know if this is true because I just hear shit. I heard that you identified as bisexual and then you stop, you no longer identify as bisexual. Is that true? No, I, I so a lot of what I say is like kind of like can be hyperbolic or jokey. So I, it's hard when you, so when I say something like I'm fucking done with women, right? If you come on and you ask me like, so I heard a statement that you're no longer dating women again. Like, I, like, so I've complained in the past that I think that men are like really aggressive and I probably joking this like, I'm fucking done with men. I'm not bisexual anymore, blah, 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 blah. But like, I would probably identify as bisexual. I'm sure you, if you have a clip loaded up, you can probably find something me saying like, fuck this, I'm done with men, only women from now on. But I'm sure that if you go back far enough in my stream, you can also probably find me saying a lot of times, uh, like, fuck women, it's too much drama. I'm only fucking the homies from now on. So, so I mean, you like, actually fuck dudes is what you're saying. Um, I, I don't like anal sex at all, no. All right, that's enough. That's enough info. We can we can read a study <laughs> now if you want. Okay, uh, give me a sec to pull this up here. Talk amongst yourselves. Um, well, what's up? Um, I still think there's so many things involved in a sexual relationship, like the emotional stuff. I I wouldn't even want to, even if I were attracted to the idea of polyamory. I don't think I'd do it just for just to the drama. Um, just, I mean, and maybe I haven't had close friends that were poly, but I, I've known quite a few colleagues and such, cause I worked in the tech field, um, throughout California. And I know like they, they have just as much drama as, as straight monogamous people do. They just, um, yeah, for and, sure. and they have as much cheating. That's the other thing that mm -hmm. shocked the shit out of me. Yeah, it happens. Yeah, of course. People in open relationships cheating on each other. And I, uh, I had actually ex mentioned once in a YouTube video some years ago is that I, it, what surprised me, I had a guy who was flirting with me and I, I wasn't interested at all. I knew him through a crowd of people. And he told me that I was blacklisted, meaning his partner who he's in an open relationship with would not allow him to date me. And I wouldn't have dated him either way or slept mm -hmm. with him or anything. But I thought it was weird because he was hitting on me with the intention of sleeping with me and telling me that she can't know and nothing ever happened i was disgusted by it yeah people but can like cheat in any type of relationship whether it surprised me because now at the time a lot of the people that i knew that were um polyamorous or out out very out about it like on youtube and such they one of the things they always said is that one of the benefits of polyamory or open relationships is you don't have to worry about cheating. And I've heard so many stories where people still cheated because they stepped outside of the whatever ever the commitment, the yeah, um, agreement know whoever, is in that relationship. Yes, whoever would say that has got to have like, like a really immature view of open relationships. You can absolutely cheat in, in any type of open or poly relationship, of course. Well, I was young and I was ignorant mm -hmm. and I only knew what I was. Yeah, I'm, I'm not blaming you. I'm not saying your saying. view. Yeah, I'm just saying yeah. that whoever told you that is like yeah. pretty clearly. Yeah, or it could have been just like I yeah. am new into it or whatever and didn't know as much. All right, anyway, so here's the one of the studies I wanted to look at. Uh, this is published on February 1st of this year, titled personality or sort of borderline personality traits in attractive women and wealthy, low attractive men are relatively favored by the opposite sex. Now, this was presented on Twitter here as the crazy hot matrix study. Uh, which we'll come back to in a sec. But I, reading the the actual results, I don't think that that's what this study says at all. It just says that men are willing to date bipolar women if those women are attractive. And can I women... just real quick before we do this, just so we're clear? So BPD is not bipolar disorder. That's borderline. Oh, sorry, borderline disorder. Borderline personality, right? personality I, disorder. Yeah, common mistake. Okay. That's my bad. Yep, no borderline problem. personality disorder. <clears throat> and uh, women are willing to date unattractive men if they're wealthy. So basically men want are willing to put up with shit if you're attractive and women are willing to put up with shit if you're wealthy, which is I guess not really surprising to anyone. But Hashtag what I really normal. wanted to talk about was the the idea of the hot crazy matrix because apparently this is something that people believe is uh, something that scientifically has basis, empirical basis that you could survey people on this. 
find that guys would would want to have sex with people who or with women who sort of give off that kind of crazy vibe what do you think about that destiny um yeah of course i mean men tend to value like appearance women tend to value security like n none of this is very surprising i don't think no 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 sure but that's that part, I, agree, crazy I agree with that that's not what i'm asking i'm asking is uh do you think that it's a woman is more desirable if she gives off sexually desirable if she gives off crazy vibes like like wait is that what you, hold on wait real quick wait of, real curious is that what you think this study is saying that a woman is more desirable if she no i'm saying that's what it, i'm saying that's how it's presented but that's not actually what it's saying but people believe this still to be the case. There, there was a- Wait, wait, uh, my, another... my understanding, just so we can be really clear, my understanding is that this study, study says that a man is willing to get with a woman despite those personality traits as long as she's right. of a certain level of attraction, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, yes. I, don't, I don't think most people are generally attracted to super crazy people. Um, it's probably more just like if you ha if somebody offers a certain amount of value in some area, you're willing to take like a huge loss in another area. Um, so, for instance, if you are like a low level employee at a company and you fuck around, you're going to get fired really easily. If you're a very, very valuable employee and you've shown your value over a long time, you could fuck around in the same way. And maybe not get fired immediately. You'll just get reprimanded first. Um, if, if there is somebody has a trait that you highly value, you're probably willing to let other things slide so for a woman if your goal is security or whatever and you want that type of financial security of your life then you're probably willing to let the guy be not as attractive as you'd be okay with and then if you're a guy and you really want a woman that's just fucking smoking hot and she like is you know doesn't clean the house well or doesn't have a job or is really crazy like that's the thing you might be willing to deal with but yeah i mean these types of trade-offs it's not surprising i don't think yeah I, well that's we all, we all agree with that but i'm trying to find uh this is a an actual study that was done on the hot crazy matrix. I, Let's I also, I'll add to this. I think it also depends oh, on Oh, this is the same fucking the, study. This is just, um, this is republished. What kind of relationship the guy's looking for the time. I know I've heard of guys that have made That's statements um, about like that they'll put up with like a psychotic woman if it's short term, like they'll bang her a few times. But if they are looking for a wife or a long-term girlfriend, then they want, then they'll do trade-offs where they'll date a girl who's not quite as hot Maybe not quite as slender, but she's she's like sane. Yeah, um, I they would have say much higher standards in that in that respect. Different standards. Yeah, I would say something that um, this is. I'm stereotyping a lot, although you two will probably like the stereotype. Well, uh, but I try to avoid it. But like, I would say that in general, women seem to have like standards for people that they would sleep and have a relationship with, and those seem to have a lot of crossover between the two. Men seem to have very different standards for sexual partners versus relationship partners. That's like my that's been my general experience. You can, that there you are can guys. There are there are not. yeah there are guys that would have a lot of sexual partners that they would absolutely never fucking date. They're like, I'd fuck her, yeah. fuck her, fuck her, never date, never date, never date, right? But for women, th there are going to be some people where women's like, okay, I'd fuck this guy, never date. But generally, it feels like there's a lot of crossover between those two groups for most women, generally speaking. Here's my thoughts on this, which is that the idea that men would be more attracted to crazy women is something that you can only have in a porn sick society where guys are taught that these girls who give off these Harley Quinn vibes that doesn't are happen though. Men aren't, men aren't attracted and to crazy women. Therefore, easier easier to sleep with. Yeah, but men aren't attracted to more crazy women. That hasn't been like demonstrated. I don't think anybody would say that. It, it hasn't been in the study, but let's work what is what he's getting at. Yeah, and repeat what you said, LP, because I, I understood what you were getting at. Let's assume for a second that the hot crazy matrix has some truth to it in the sense that guys are going to be eager to sleep with women who are giving off, I'm going to keep calling it Harley Quinn vibes because I think that kind of describes the type of girl that I'm talking about, you know, pigtails, skirts, fishnets, that kind of like damaged, easier, you know what I'm saying, loose women. Uh, you see that and you think this girl will be easy to sleep with and that's where the attractiveness comes from in a society that values casual sex that's a great hypothesis but i mean like that's all it is it's all conjecture i mean like men don't prefer if you give two equally like everything else women like the guy's gonna go with the less crazy one over the more crazy one like what, but i'm talking like what if we do a study where we have just photos nice trad girl and then crazy, you know, left wing slut and say, which one would you rather have casual sex with?
then it's probably going to depend on what the, it's going to be informed a lot by what that person thinks about it. if they think that somebody that's had like yeah. more like if i had to choose between just if i had one casual sex encounter with each of those i'd probably go with one that looks like they have more casual sex obviously right like see proving my hypothesis and that's because we live in a porn sick society where wait but i don't think that's por i think that's a totally reasonable conclusion what do you mean well, it's a trick question because you shouldn't be wanting to have casual sex. Okay, full then why stock. not just say that instead of like <laughs> pretending like you're setting up some like crazy trap, right? Like, no, 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 I'm not saying. That. I'm just, I'm just talking here. What, what do you think about porn? Here, here's my God, I'm gonna my, mute my main thing, which is that uh, porn is too accessible online, and so children are exposed to porn, and that's a massive moral failing of our culture and society um i think that pornography can be positive i think that pornography can be negative um like all forms of entertainment it's just something that you have to um engage with in a responsible manner and not overuse or allow it to dictate or ruin your view of reality too much um, i think that it is totally possible um actually I, I would say probably the majority of people engage in with pornography in an unhealthy way such that it distorts two things one is their view on like what a average woman either looks like or should be expected to do or should be expected to enjoy um and then two, it distorts your views on sex, on what you think sex should be and, and how that relationship sexually should should act. So, I mean, like, I, in my opinion, I think that if you have a healthy relationship with porn, it's awesome. You can enjoy it. You can learn new things from it. You can see a lot of cool stuff. Um, but if you have an unhealthy engagement with it, then it's probably good to take a step back, analyze how you view it, see if it's impacting your real life too much, and then either reconsider your attachment to it or abandon it altogether. I, I can sort of see the argument for watching some at some point in your life like because like you said you might learn a few things but there's certainly there reaches a certain point where you have to say i'm better off without porn now like it's hard for me to like me as somebody who watched a lot of porn when i was younger and who stopped watching it a couple years ago i can't conceive of how my life would be better watching porn than not watching it there's just there's just no way that like the amount of self-respect that I have is not something that I would trade for any kind of momentary pleasure or to learn some fucking radical position that I've never heard of before. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's great. And then I would say it's really sad if your self-respect is derived on whether or not you masturbate. I think there's way okay, better things Destiny, to have self-respect about. You oh, realize come, but not... watching porn and masturbating is shameful behavior. I totally disagree, but... It, it, it is that's why you, you can't just it say privately. it is you realize it's not an argument right you can't say it. i do i go to the okay the, there's a lot of things that i do privately it's, it doesn't just, make it's not an argument it's self-evident it's can, not you, can you can't you, so you like want. i know there's a, a big in the in the tradcon tool basket of like it's self-evident it's obvious those aren't real arguments i don't know if you know that or not but that's not like an actual argument i can't argue with you when you go like oh well it's self-evident. because i would argue like fucking kids touch themselves and like two months old they start touching their dicks and shit like this is just average like baby behavior like you're gonna say that people Babies are being can do that to themselves but that doesn't open the door for adults that doesn't make it okay for adults wait 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 hold on kind of wait wait wait, wait. being wait off. being really clear <laughs> i'm not saying that adults should be touching children i'm saying oh, that we okay. are sexual we creatures throughout our like entire like the kids yeah. do that type of to, yeah, but to say that like they should be shamed for it or that's like a shameful or no, that, like that's like really no, weird you don't you don't shame a five-year-old for touching themselves inappropriately or getting naked in front of others but you tell them not to do it and you explain that it's inappropriate behavior uh, you that explain mean, yeah so just shaming yeah so to be clear you behavior. so anything but to explain that it's inappropriate in a public setting is to be abusive yes to tell, yeah, well, to tell somebody um, that it is inappropriate to even do it in private that is abuse that's child abuse i'm sorry full stop what then i don't know to what extent you're talking like if, if you're telling if you're telling like, a child that even in a private setting for them to touch themselves sexually that that's inappropriate that is child abuse little girls can get urinary tract infections that's very not child easily abuse. from playing with themselves down there i'm, I'm being people serious, can get diseases like, in a million ways but sexual exploration okay, is an, an absolutely vital part of you like growing up as a, a functioning adult like i you, wouldn't want my child letting, to letting kids access porn i never said anything about kids accessing porn i don't play with themselves all the time I mean, where, like, where I'm going is it's actually not healthy for little girls to play with themselves down there. It the time. absolutely it's actually, is. What do you mean? It, it's part of your, it's part of your diet. It's part of your sexual diet. It's part of realizing like your body and who you I'm are. I'm talking about they, young, young children, not pubescent, not 12, 13 year old girls. That sure. I, I guess learning I don't how want to like, use a shower head. That's not what I'm talking yeah, about. I, I don't, like I don't girls, know what the level of maturity is here or the understanding. I'm talking of, about really young. No, children. no, no. I'm saying I, of the maturity I, of the two okay. of you. 
children will explore sexually at very young ages, like when they're six months old. And to anybody yes. that's had a child, you will see this. When yes. you take your diaper off your kid, he'll reach down and he'll start grabbing his dick because they do that when they're very, but very, very young. But he's not being sexual. It, I, it's, it's a thing. It's where our yeah, hands not, are. That's not sexual. It's you're, not um, sexual. You're, I, I, yeah, you're both just completely dead wrong. I don't know how else to say it. Like At six months old, little boys are touching themselves sexually. The, I, it's I don't just, know. it's there. It's like... Uh, I don't like the problem is that in your mind, sexual is this idea of like you're charged to no. orgasm and no, like the touching yourself they and exploring the differences married. between it's yourself. Not, that's like that type of exploration. Baby, to a six month old, they might as well put their finger in their mouth or their nose or their ear. They're just, no, they're, it's very, they're very, very, very different. Having, you can't be sexual they put before their feet in their mouth. You, that, that's I so, mean, it's oh, like, man. doesn't mean they have a foot fetish. I'm just saying, I don't attribute, okay, Destiny, to clarify what I'm saying, I don't yeah. attribute sexual feelings with a six month old touching themselves and their genitals. I don't even attribute that to a four or five year old, even if it feels good to them. I don't think that they're making a sexual connection. They just, they touched it and they're like, ooh, I like that. I, but that doesn't mean that they are being sexual. But if I had a daughter, I would tell her not to do it because I don't want her to get a urinary tract I understand, infection and i'm just and i'm telling you that that's abusive now whether you agree with it or don't agree with it, not yes to, yes absolutely okay, it's not it's not giving them bubble baths every night abusive because it that's no how you but making you a child feel all. bad for what is a no, universal no, no when you tell somebody that it's inappropriate to engage in exploration that every fucking human in the I history tell of mankind has done not to touch themselves because they won't even comprehend what the fuck you're talking about. They're two months old. You can old. tell a five-year-old girl to stop playing with herself down there and that's not abusive. The same way you can tell them not to wipe their shit on the wall. That's not abusive to say, you know what, don't do that, it's gross. That, you don't that, have to well, you, you, you're, you're like your, your examples prove my point so much. Like the idea that you would make a child feel the idea that you would make. So <laughs> I, yeah, fuck, weird. I don't think the maturity level is here for this conversation. So I'm really uncomfortable continuing. Uh, wait, Anika, I think maybe with you, I could, but not with I, I, I hypocrite. I actually feel really bad for your children because they probably have really, really unhealthy views of themselves okay. and their sexuality. Oh, like I, I, yeah. I would, the idea that you shame a child for like just I, growing up at like what you should be doing. My children are going to have kids at school asking about their dad's extra girlfriend. That's that's great for you. I don't know what your kids are going to be talking about at school. Actually, you probably aren't going to hear about most of it because I imagine your kids don't trust you, probably rightfully so, right? If you want to have a healthy, non-abusive relationship with your children, what you should be doing is you should be saying like, hey, if you do these types of explanations, do them in private and make sure that you're safe doing it. And if you have questions, ask me. That's how a real mature parent that's not trying to force some weird fucking um, immature yes. view of sexuality on their child would actually handle it. I'm just, that for a I'm healthy relationship with child, that's how you do it. Five-year-old though, like I, I'm separating pubescent like 10 11 12 when they're old enough to have those conversations or even older and, and old i understand have, but again this is just like in terms of familiarity with what would in terms of familiarity don't let your oh my god and I, I was actually being gender specific because little girls are actually way more susceptible to infection down there if they're playing with themselves well, okay this is that a weird okay so this is like the s here this is a weird red herring the okay. idea that little girls are getting out our urinary tract infections all the fucking time just to play themselves. first no, of all a uti no, is not well, the end of the world number the one destiny the, okay little girls aren't you no okay, okay yes i'm not saying they never touch themselves down there what i'm saying is it's not like this is a daily practice for most five-year-olds that's not a daily practice for most little children okay i don't it's i don't i don't i this is like I, like as a parent i've done a lot of reading on this because i'm curious like what's a normal behavior for my kid or not and like that young children touch themselves down there and I would yeah, not- Yeah, no one's saying your them. kid is a freak okay. if they're doing that, but it's not child abuse to say, hey, don't what do that. What you don't want to do is you don't want to lead the child into feeling shamed for like exploring and understanding who they are. But when you tell them like that thing that you're doing, that you have a huge natural urge to do, that is disgusting and don't do that. It's inappropriate to do that around any, like well, or whatever, inappropriate to do that ever. In our mouth. I what? didn't use the word- Yeah, goodness. who's saying that? That you're saying that it's inappropriate. Yeah, it is inappropriate. It's an appropriate Absolutely. part of your development, though. It's not appropriate in public. I, and I agree with you, of course. Wait, I'm not saying okay. five-year-olds should be masturbating in public. That's fucking insane. Well, not even masturbating. Whether it's masturbating or not, I'm talking about, like, picking their... It's, okay, similar to how if your kid has their fingers in their nose all the time, you'd say, could you stop doing that? Like, that's don't do that. You're not going to shame them and make them feel, you know, body conscious about the fact that they're eating their boogers in public but you just you don't do it have you There's bought your son his first Come dildo yet destiny you're pretty intelligent you just, i don't sorry i don't like to talk about other people's kids you kind of took it there though a little bit yeah, of a little, 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 little. Let, let's not let's not keep 
going down. Wait, that weren't road, you the first? I, wait, hold on. Excuse me. Just to be clear on this, weren't you the first one to say that like my kid's not going to be asking the other fellow classmates about their dad's girlfriend? No, I said that in response to you talking about my kids, but we don't. You know, oh, why? Because I, I think you're. Like to, to oh, I mean, I was thinking it personal. I mean, if you want to think it's personal, that's fine. I don't care. Um, I've said my piece. If you guys, if you guys want to spend a whole stream like doing research on this, I, it would be really funny to watch you guys stumble into article after article after article. The the idea that kids don't begin sexual exploration until they're <laughs> puberty is just absolutely no. Not no one is saying. No one is saying that you're okay. you're really yeah. straw man. I that's pretty hard here. I don't know yes, if it's because you're so ass mad. <laughs> I agree with you that that happens. I don't think it's child abuse to tell your little girl not to touch herself when she's five or be playing with herself is it, all the time. Destiny, is I it child know. abuse to let children watch pornography? Yeah, I think that's really unhealthy. I don't think okay. that's... So they agree, on... agree with me that we live in a sick culture and society that makes it way too easy for children to do that. I wouldn't agree with the sick society and sick culture, but I think there could be more stringent protections on it. But honestly, a lot of this comes down to the parenting. You should probably shouldn't let your kids like unrestricted oh, access Oh, come to on. That's, that's like such an apologist porn cooler oh, position for that's letting that's kids that's access that's this that's shit. That's the, yeah, the average I, age that children watch porn in this country is from like eight to 11. That is evil. Like that is insane. And no one's doing anything about it. And, and whenever you bring this up, people say, well, it's the parents fault. Okay. Well, great. So the whole fucking country can't parent their kids properly. Maybe we should do something. Um, if you want to put harder age groups on porn, I, I don't think I would necessarily I be against. Okay, yeah, sure. I, I used do. to agree very strongly with you that the that it's the parents' responsibility, but it's very difficult when you send your kids somewhere else for eight hours a day, and when you they go to play with their friends, and you don't even if you trust the parents and you think they're good parents, that doesn't mean that their children aren't watching porn. I've heard of five and six year olds accessing porn on an iPad in church, and that was the one that. It just, and the mom was furious because she thought she was a good mom. And we're talking like actual pornography, not, you know, just a boob or something. Um, I agree with you, yes, that children should not be accessing that stuff. But it feels like we live in a society, I feel, as though you're shamed for not wanting your child to do that. I've never but in my life heard somebody shame somebody for not wanting their, like, 12-year-old child to look at porn. But maybe you guys are in way different societies than me. I'm not sure. There's, there was like some article about how you need to buy your 12 year old daughter sex toys on. I, I, I know the article that you're talking about, and I can confidently say that you do not have the prerequisite maturity to engage with those ideas. So, whatever meme jokes you probably made about it were about as much as you can handle for that conversation. You know, for somebody who was like against bringing up this kind of like male sexual energy argument, you really keep going to this maturity thing, man. You keep saying this over and over and over again. I am very mature. I would you argue very, that I'm very, a lot very, more You have an insanely you, immature Destiny. ability to understand or talk about you. This whole conversation, I, I can't actually tell if I'm being memed or not, or what level meta irony we're on right now. Like your attachment with sex is, is hilarious. It's like prepubescent. Like your understanding and engagement with these topics is what I would expect out of like somebody in my son's classroom, like uh, another nine-year-old, like unironically. Like, uh, do you, so you guys have sex with other people? Like, is that like, well, like everything that you've said so far is like what I would expect out of like an average, like prepubescent kid like your engagement with the topic is like incredibly like juvenile but i, I can't i thought that i don't I'm, know how much I'm of just a joke on the basis that we're not fucking anything goes just fuck everyone. no on the basis get, that get yeah so like the, so yeah so like one of the big like one of the big advances that we've made in education over the past 100 years or 200 years i guess is the idea that to entertain a hypothetical like when you are incapable of even considering something i'm saying without having to retreat back into an area where you feel very safe right where you can like put it in your own house and then demonize it and chastise it because you're incapable of even confronting that idea for a little bit i think it says a lot to your level of comfort with with ideas that are alien to you like notice you're how like you're talking I, about like, the kids touching themselves if I'm, specifically if I'm, yeah so like exactly idea? so like you're, you're doing it again right and the funny thing is like you can laugh it up but like you're you're just standing no, in the no, face I'm, of I'm it, real quick you're you're standing in the, the face of like that's not the only example that every at, every every uh, element of this conversation you know, this we've tried all, to ambush me with like some tweet or some video that i've said to try to make me look bad i know we have like strong disagreements and i'm not talking about whether i like you or not have a vigorous conversation but for you to just sit here and call me immature and say i'm scared in this is it's really weak man that's these that's, are I'm real sorry positions that, you feel that, that people have you can't just chalk it up to immaturity and, and being scared <laughs> sure. and okay being you know what then, you know what i could be totally wrong let's see if you can prove me wrong what do you think that article about the dildo for your daughter was about 
Oh, I didn't actually read it, but okay. It's then, then you've proven my point. Like that's it. Then what's the next thing you want to talk about? Well, no, it's probably if I had to guess some shit that's saying that like if your kid comes to you and tells you that they're exploring their bodies, that you need to help them by going out and buying them a sex toy, and it probably says to do this at an, an inappropriate age. What do you consider an inappropriate age to, when a child starts masturbating? Or do you think all masturbation is inappropriate and immoral? Mm, well, I do, but not for children, because children don't know better. So I wouldn't call a child immoral for masturbating, but I do think adults shouldn't masturbate. Okay, so what age do you They're magically have to stop masturbating? Well, I don't, I, I don't think it's like a huge deal if you do. You're not like a terrible person if you masturbate. What, what, I think everyone is a different age of maturity, and I would, I would be far more concerned with my child putting themselves at risk and being unknowledgeable about what they're doing with their body. But I would not promote masturbating. And if my if I realized that my teenager was jerking off all the time or masturbating, whatever, I would kind of ignore it and not I wouldn't bring it up. I wouldn't I would never want to corner them because I've I've heard of parents doing that well, and can't trying you just to have like healthy like, conversations with your kids about like I, their sexuality. I would do like, that when I when I get to that point. As a parent, that will be something that I, I will have those conversations, but I will want my child to guide that conversation because I know that would be a very scary thing to happen to me when I was a teenager. I wouldn't want someone to be like, I found your sock or whatever whatever it is they, they say. I wouldn't want there to be a level of embarrassment, um, but I would want them to be safe. Um, and it, it really just depends. Every kid has a different maturity level. You could have a 14 year old that you feel comfortable having these conversations with, but a 16 year old, you don't feel as mature enough. It just I, like, it really I, I, I understand no, well, that sorry, like, that's a wrong age. Maybe. Sure. Yeah. I, Cause I'm going to get mean yeah, that to whatever. I like I had to start talking to my son about this when he was six, because like kids okay, start touching well, themselves no, 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 at really early ages. Yeah. You. Like, I, you know, I'm, sure, I, wait, I'm not speaking to you specifically because I know this conversation, especially because the topic's brought up, especially because of the type of person that I hypocrite is, um, that these, they, there's going to be a ton of clips that are going to float around from this. Um, I just think that it is so entirely d like sad and, 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 and pathetic the way that we view how immature we view children and their engagement with themselves and their sexual understanding of themselves like the idea and i'm not i'm not i'm not trying to tag you any i'm sorry holy fuck because i you seem like i, I could have you the benefit of the yeah doubt, you seem like i could have a decent conversation but i hear because it's like on another well, you, fucking no, you see, level you're right totally now, right? misrepresenting what i'm saying what i'm saying, what I'm, saying what I'm saying is that like this idea cause, but because i've heard you say this a lot they're like oh well once they hit puberty once they become like right at that prepubescent level like <clears> kids begin sexual exploration at incredibly early ages like, i know they old. do yeah. neither neither lp or i have destiny just you know, just has to have this straw man version of me that he can project so he can have something to get angry about or something. I'm not Destiny, trying to get I, oh, okay. Destiny, Destiny. I, made a, I made a video called Lena Dunham did nothing wrong where I argued that it was crazy for people to call her a pedophile based off of the, the stuff that she wrote in her memoirs. That's a video I made that's still out there. When, I I, so for the earlier conversation, when do you think is an appropriate age where kids have to stop masturbating? Well, I Otherwise, tried to pull up the art. Oh, when to stop masturbating? Yeah. I, look, like I said, this is not something I have strong feelings on. I just think that for adults, it's you're better off, especially men, especially males. You shouldn't like just be throwing your seed out onto the fucking floor. Okay. It's it's not good for you. I, I guess uh, so like just in terms of like things that I would say, like my issue is that a lot of people grow up to have very unhealthy relationships with sex where they feel ashamed or disgusted yeah, by their own bodies. Or, no, it's because old. they have parents that are too embarrassed to talk to them about these things, except for saying, don't do that. That's gross. That's inappropriate. That's nasty. You should be ashamed. You're going to get infections. I would infections. agree that that's how the All the kids generation. are watching porn these days. So they're not... Yeah. They're not the previous generation, I think that they're not talking to their parents. They're just watching porn. They don't have to ask any questions. They can go watch a fucking bukkake gangbang. I feel like there was a pendulum that swung where there was a generation of parents that when they started to have children, they said, well, my parents never told me about this. I remember my own mother telling me she started her period at 16 doing the splits in gymnastics class, had no idea what the fuck was happening to her body. She thought mm -hmm. she hurt herself. A 16 year old, she was a late bloomer apparently, a 16 year old starting to bleed and had no idea. I knew about my period, like I don't even remember how young I was when I learned what a period was, probably six or seven. Yeah, that's when a really first, common experience it, with girls that they don't know. But it's my coming. mother, mm -hmm. so someone who was born in like the 60s, mm -hmm. didn't like in high school, didn't even know what a period was to the point where she went to the nurse's office. Yeah. And so so where I was going with this is that I feel like there was a there was a a, a generation of people who they felt so repressed and like they couldn't have an open dialogue with their parents in their school. 
to the point where it swung the opposite, where it's like, well, I'm just going to buy a dildo for my 12 year old. That's what I'm saying is I think you are correct, Destiny, that there was a time where children were being repressed sexually and we were shaming them. And now it's like this whole freedom, you know, I just, I feel like there's more, and maybe, maybe that's, I'm not saying statistically parents are more like that, but that's what the mainstream pushes. I never see articles written about how you should teach your children to be less sexual. I see about how you should teach your children how to navigate the legalities of sending a nudie Snapchat to somebody else because now they've just transmitted child porn. Or is that the word transmitted? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But is anyway, there, you is there an age where it's inappropriate to buy your kid a sex toy, Destiny? Um, I feel like I'm getting baited in this whole topic. And I feel like this isn't a good room to have this conversation in. I'm sorry. I, I would like, like to the, know, the I mean, ironic because... thing is that like earlier, like your complaint over and over again was that like, oh, they'll get UTIs. Oh, they'll get UTIs. Well, like having like a safe space with like a five year old touch. I'm in a five year old. Sure, I don't think a five year old should probably be fucking themselves a deal. That sounds really fucking weird. I, I, sure. I don't I never mentioned a, mm -hmm. a sex toy at the, that age. The article in question, I first of all, they took it down. I tried to pull it up. They took it down. But there, I found on Daily Caller, they wrote about it. And on there, they said that, uh, according to the article, it was whatever age they want, they ask for it at. So if an eight-year-old girl comes to you and says, I want you to buy me a vibrator, is that an appropriate thing to give a child? Like, I'm not saying that that would happen, but- I, I think just, it's better to just tell I'm them it's inappropriate. I think I think that the, that I think the be, yeah, here, I agree. Right? I think the better thing is to just tell them it's inappropriate. And then just anytime you hear anything inappropriate come from children's room, just close your ears and ignore it. And then let them get educated by their friends at school. Since so it sounds like that's where your kids are gonna get all their sex education from. Cause you're too embarrassed or ashamed to talk to them about it. That's what I would say. And then maybe they'll well, get twice and their friends at school or whatever. Them about it, maybe right? let them get it, let them get hooked up with the, let them get hooked up with the crazy dildos and vibrators from what their friends at school get them. And maybe they'll have a super fun time there. That's what I'll say. What's the, okay, what's the next topic? I don't want to talk about child sex anymore. This is really fucking weird. Yeah, I mean, what you about, brought it up in, in all fairness. I brought, you're guided, this, the literal name of the show is Sex Wars. And we're talking about like, you it, know, a lot of it yeah, is hey, like, hey, man, it's all good. I'm just, it was a I'm working saying, title that we, we just I asked about porn and money. you went straight to babies touching themselves. But I mean, that, that's. You think I brought that up on, the, you don't think anybody else I, was. Yeah, I may I may have mentioned that it, because sometimes we'll have these conversations with people that are into poly, whatever you want to call it, just different things. And uh, there, at least in my experience, a lot of people that I've gotten into arguments with, if you have the argument long enough, eventually you find out that they are not opposed to things involving children. Mm -hmm. Not that they think that you should have sex with them, but they just they don't want to protect children in any way. So I was just curious where you stand on that destiny. Yeah. I mean, there should probably be, I don't know what those barriers look like, but there's probably better age verification for accessing yeah. pornographic content. I don't necessarily disagree with that. All right, listen, we can wrap things up here. We've gone, uh, we've gone, didn't give it a good 90 minutes. Uh, I, I just wanted to say to the chat, cause I've seen a lot of people saying like, oh, this LP guy is so stupid and shit like this. And this goes back to what I was saying about self-respect. It's like, imagine, me giving a shit with some fucking coomer who's jerking off to porn has to th has to say about me. I could not possibly, possibly care what you guys say. There, there it is right there. LP is a moron. These are angry coomers just fucking triggered that anybody could ever dare have the gall, the audacity to say to them, hey, man, you could stop watching porn and jerking off if you wanted to. All right, Destiny, you want to plug something? You got, you got final thoughts Do you thoughts have final there. thoughts? <laughs> um, wow. That's all I got to say. Just, wow. What a... Wow. <laughs> That's all I got. I'm blown away. Yeah. I mean, you agree that... But you know what? I'll just... I'll just uh, you know what? Thanks, everybody, for watching. And thanks, Destiny, for coming and, and giving us your time. We do appreciate it, sir. You'll have to there's come no, back sometime. I hope there's no hard feelings, because <laughs> I do, do kind of like you. I, I, you know, Vosh has moved the Overton window of being a shitty human being so far that I think you've become likable, at least by, like, the laws of relativity. Yeah. So I, I, I got no say... problem with you, man. I just want to talk to you, and I appreciate the fact that you came here and gave us your time. So thanks for doing that, and have a good day. Thanks, for everybody, for watching, and we'll catch you all on the flip side. Yeah. Peace out. Thanks for having me.
Um, Annika, someone chatting. Yeah, Annika. <laughs> okay. Bye. All right, bye. I for some reason I thought that the I hypocrite guy I thought that he was like a like JF. I thought that he was going to be like some guy that I super disagreed with in the past, but he was like um but he like does like philosophy or something. I don't know why that maybe because he's got a fucking maybe he tricked me because he has that statue of like that whatever for his profile pic. I thought it was like, oh, this is like a philosophy guy. I'm probably gonna disagree with it. and then we were gonna argue. I had no idea that he was like that fucking stupid. Holy shit. Um fuck me. My bad. I wouldn't I wouldn't have agreed to this set of topics with these people. The I man, I try not to lose my cool too much. One thing that I really hope is illustrated though, that was like really funny, is like people actually don't know anything about STDs. That's really funny to me. That like somebody can have herpes and not know that they have herpes, and then like shame people for like serious like that's really interesting to me because it kind of because it's really funny because in a way like both of those people like kind of proved the point of Molina's tweet that like wait do people think chlamydia is a deadly disease like people actually have no fucking idea like that's insane to me like um or that um or or yeah I don't know jeez wow holy shit remember to hit that like and subscribe and don't forget the notification bell so that my videos show up right in your feed this day last week this is like Thanks the only the good song content, buddy. it's the it's Bonus the titan song wins